All right, guys, it's a new year, a new month, and it might be time, because it's been a while, to do a new Winnebago roof. I was recently contacted by the owner of this 2003 Winnebago Sightseer, and they're in Colorado, and they explained that they were driving down the road, and their roof radius popped out of the road, I think in Texas. Now, luckily, the owner was able to salvage it and put tuck the uh, radius back in and then seal it back down using ProFlex. So that is the good news that he was able to salvage the roof from being uh, ripped off on his trip. But uh, this is a 2003, like I said, so it's 20 years old now and it has a lot more problems and he wants to make sure that it's going to last another 20 years. Now, for those that are unaware on a Winnebago roof, this is a fiberglass roof but it is a sheet fiberglass we call phylon f-i-l-o-n and it is laminated down there is no real structure to the roof that is to say there's no trusses no framing whatsoever within the roof its structure itself it's just eighth inch paneling on the ceiling styrofoam eighth inch paneling on top and then that phylon fiberglass sheet material on top of that so the entire strength of the roof is found in the lamination and more importantly on a Winnebago, the phylon material wraps over and it just gets tucked into the side, which is why he had to tuck it back in so the roof wouldn't rip out. That's a very common problem on a Winnebago and one that I try and urge everybody to inspect their roof at least once a year on a Winnebago because of this issue, especially before you buy it. So while he was able to salvage the roof from getting torn off, because usually what happens is the wind will take this and just rip that entire phylon material off, the entire roof itself, it might be difficult to see, is loose, especially at the radius. You can just kind of see it up to here. You'll be able to see it over here too. Uh, there's a big bubble down the middle of the roof here. Another one right there. And basically the entire back is loose too. Now the owner asked me to go ahead and replace the roof. Uh, some people that might have a roof in this condition may not want to replace the entire roof and they might ask me what I would do. Uh, there's usually two or three options you could do. I try to explain it to you. Uh, where it's loose, on the radius right here. Uh, I do ask if people want to put some solar panels down. So you can take the solar panels, put them on the edge right there, and then the screws themselves would go into the eighth inch paneling and kind of hold everything together as a sandwich. It is something of a band-aid repair, but should keep the, uh, the fine line material from ripping out down the road. And you get a nice upgrade to your RV at the same time. May not be the prettiest location to put solar panels, but a patch is a patch. Now the other common repair that people want me to do is to basically relaminate the roof down, which can be done. And to do that, we'd have to take the skylight off, uh, everything off on this side, untuck the roof, do the same thing over here, take all the vents and everything off on this side, untuck the roof, and if they want to do it fairly inexpensively, you can cut the radius phylon on both the front and rear cap and carefully peel it back and try to glue underneath. There's really no guarantee that that will be a long lasting repair or that the decking underneath isn't damaged. Uh, and the amount of labor and effort it takes into doing that isn't much cheaper than doing the whole roof by itself at that point anyway. And then the other option would be to actually just cut the loose material off, glue down the, the loose surface back to the decking itself. And then Winnebago does make a roof repair kit, which is about 18 inches wide of this phylon material. You put a channel on the top, screw it down, tuck it in there, and you'd have a new radius glued down. But again, you've lost your seamless roof. Now you have a piece of molding all the way around that can hold water on there. And, um, hi Juanito. Hi, Buenos dias. Oh. <laughs> and uh, again, the repair won't be quite as long lasting, aesthetically pleasing, and it's not much cheaper than doing the roof again. And so the owner wants to make sure that they have a good RV that they can take across country to begin with. And while it is a pretty big expense to put a new roof on an RV, <laughs> financially it still does make sense to replace the roof to prolong the life of the RV, add value to the RV, and make sure that you can resell it to somebody should you need to. Whereas uh, an RV without a roof really doesn't have any uh, value to it whatsoever, even scrap value.
Now, when it comes to the 2003 Winnebago a Sightseer, these are kind of my favorite RVs as far as Class A gas motorhomes go. I always envisioned myself having one. Now, granted, it would have been a Ford engine and a Ford chassis and not a uh, workhorse, but I really like these. These are fun RVs that have all the features that you need in an RV and uh, nice, short. You can get almost anywhere you want to drive. I like these a lot. Because this is a short RV, about 27 feet long, it shouldn't be too hard of a job for me to do. And I don't think I'll even need to add a support down the middle because structurally, I don't think we're having an issue. Uh, this should be a pretty straightforward, easy job to do. I say that knocking on wood, but I'm going to bring you guys along for it. We'll show the highlights of it and hopefully uh, what to expect if you need to do it yourself. I do have a number of videos and even series put together about replacing Winnebago roofs. Uh, I think even on the sightseer we did one already. And of course the first step if you followed any of these uh, videos is we have to take everything apart that's on the roof. Now luckily in this unit there's not too much to take apart. No vents in the bedroom. Uh, one vent here in the bathroom. The roof AC. The skylight. And the skylight's a newer skylight lens on the top. And then one vent here in the living room. And the owner's already provided new vents for me. Really though, it's going to be the most difficult part is going to be taking the front cap off. Uh, even on the rear cap on this one, it's literally just a small little cap or eyebrow up there. So that shouldn't be too bad. And of course, we'll take the ladder off. So as I tear this apart, I will say one thing that I find surprising. For whatever reason in the RV world, when new roofs get installed, uh, installers and owners seem to like to keep to use the old vents and attachments that are on the roof. Uh, unless it's a expensive skylight that's not broken or fairly new or even a roof AC I don't see any reason to keep any of the old attachments on the roof if You're doing a new roof. You might as well put all new attachments on and like this vent right here This is like the cheapest vent possible that Winnebago put on in 2003 Why not upgrade them anyways? Uh, the labor is going to be the same to put a nice vent in so Why not do something nice at the same time on the flip side? If you have attachments like uh, satellite dishes or TV antennas that you don't necessarily use, maybe it's time to get rid of them. And then you won't have uh, all those extra holes in the roof too. Uh, might as well do that at the same time. I don't know. We'll see. So I'm not completely sure if we'll be installing this satellite dish in the future on the new roof, but I do need to crank it up so I can get it out of the way. Just have to line up the slot on that handle into that screw. And then the handle will drop down. Very easy. You can kind of see the uh, cross section of the roof here. It's just that eighth inch paneling, styrofoam paneling, and then the phylon that you saw loose on the roof. I'm just taking the control box off the roof AC. It's just going to be two wing nuts right here. Okay, and then of course don't forget to take the plug off the controller that goes to the AC unit and the free switch there. That's just where that plug would have gone. Then we we'll just drop this whole thing out. And just like that, the roof AC is disconnected. This just dangles in the way. It's usually the last thing you should do so you don't have to repeatedly hit it on your head like I normally do, but I don't think things through all the time. The last thing you have to do is the front cap. So I'm just taking off the doors right there so I get access to the uh, front cap hardware underneath there. One thing I did notice is that the previous owner took the TV out right here. They made a oak door and a frame for the TV would have gone. They did a good job on that. And that's a pretty nice cabinet face they built too with a box insert that fit where the TV was going to go. That's a really good build. Very proud of that build. But now we can get in that front cap there. So we do need to take the front cap off. So we have the lower screws right there that hold the front cap on the front. And then these screws right up there that'll hold it up on the top. So it's all hidden hardware. I need all that all the way because I do need to get the front cap off. Because with Winnebago's unique roof construction, this front cap, which is a gel coat fiberglass cap, its structure actually keeps the bow in the roof and because it's on top of the phylon that we're replacing. It's absolutely vital when you're doing a Winnebago roof to take the front and rear caps off. Otherwise, and you're not holding the phylon down, it's not sandwiched underneath. And honestly, almost every Winnebago that I've ever seen, the front cap is leaking somewhere anyway. So we might as well address that while we're at it. I won't be surprised if we find evidence of a leak too. 
Now, if there's any advice I can give you when you're taking the front cap off, the front lower screws right here are very short. Don't get those confused with these screws up here, which are longer. If you put the upper screws in where the lower screws go, that screw will go through the front cap and to the outside, and then you have fiberglass repair to do. So I was able to get all the screws out from there. Okay, up on the roof now because that's the next step. All right, so we're gonna start back here. I've already taken off the hardware for the ladder. Just have to take the hardware at the top and get the ladder out of the way. Obviously, we're gonna save the solar panels. Like I said, the skylight's new. We should be able to salvage that. Of course, we're gonna keep the AC. Now this AC has like a pizza pan on it. I think somebody had a magnetic antenna that they were using there. He's fine with this AC shroud, so we're gonna leave it the way it is. Now he did ask me if I could salvage these vent covers to where another trailer he has. This uh, plastic's pretty, well, uh, pretty much falling apart. So I'll do my best, but I can't make promises on that. And then we still have to decide if we're gonna keep the TV antenna or the satellite dish. Uh, the boot on this one's definitely torn, seen better days. So we wouldn't want to put this back on the roof. Guess we'll find out we want to do it with that. And lastly, right here on this sewer vent, the solar panel wiring was ran into this great big huge uh, like five inch PVC coupler or union and then they ran the wires down the sewer vent which is a little bit weird to me so I haven't seen this setup before so we'll be doing something different here anyways and they did use die core on this skylight which of course probably didn't stick to the silicone over here very well you can see it comes off very easily because as i like to say to everybody winnebago uses self-leveling silicone on their roofs it's a very high quality material uh, but it is self-leveling silicone it's very rubbery and it's long lasting dicor will not stick to this now dicor is the standard roof sealant used on all other rvs and you can see this stuff is dicor and they use dicor right here Usually the easiest way for me to tell in the sun, if I can kind of like scar it with my fingernail, it's likely going to be Dicor. If I try that with the silicone, I can't bite into it because it's very rubbery. It's absolutely vital. If you are ever going to reseal a Winnebago roof, to make sure you're using the right product, because like I said, because Dicor will not stick to silicone. And Dicor can work on fiberglass roofs, metal roofs, membrane roofs, about any roof out there. The silicone you'd only use on a fiberglass or a metal roof, never on a membrane roof. Hopefully, I've made a little bit of sense there, but Winnebago uses self-leveling silicone. Most of the rest of the industry uses a lap sealant known as Dicor, right there. So really the next step is just rip off all this off the roof. And the easiest way I've found to actually get the screws out of this, is just get a putty knife, kind of cut yourself away around and then pull it off, you can find the screws at that point, right there. Very simple. A lot more to go. All right, so I got that vent cover off. Somebody has upgraded this vent from the original factory one. And they did what I don't like to see. They didn't seal underneath the brackets that are holding that vent lid on. They just put the bracket on and sealed over the top of it. So it was just the lap seal on top of that screw that was sealing it and maybe the putty tape underneath it. I would have liked to have seen some sealant right here. It acts as a glue too. It's an awful lot to ask of this tiny little lip of self-leveling silicone. Actually, they use butyl too. And then of course butyl doesn't work very effectively on these roofs because there's not a lot of compression force on it. If you remember correctly, there's only eighth inch uh, paneling right here. And so the screw is just gonna grab that eighth inch paneling and butyl works by compression. Winnebago uses a very thin black butyl, which compresses pretty easily. And it's a rope one, a little bit of rope inside there. Let's see if I can't get it off for you guys. So it's a little bit more like a window gasket than butyl tape. 
but within there it is embedded. It's hard to see. A piece of tape with uh, that's kind of infused with butyl. So trying to uh, use screws against eighth inch paneling to compress butyl is really usually not the best bet. That's why you, I will usually forego any butyl like here and go with silicone like Winnebago does on the rest of the vents over here. That works really, really well. That being said, I don't suspect water leakage was the problem that made this roof fail. Based on what I see, it's right there at the radiuses, so it's just adhesive failure. And then right here at the uh, gaps and the paneling that it's underneath, it just seems like the, the roof age is out. There is quite a bit of tension that this radius is under, and then it wants to push uh, the phylon up, and that's where it's gonna push at the weak point in the glue once it fails. But we'll find out when we start ripping it off if there was a, any water damage. I don't suspect water damage or water leakage based on what I'm feeling when I'm walking on it. However, that being said, I'm not a roofer, I'm not a builder, but because we have two separate layers right there and this is exposed underneath to the normal air that we're breathing, this can create condensation on the underside of this and then you can actually get water damage even though there's not a water leak. It's just the condensation from the moisture or the moisture in the air coming on the back side of the phylon material and dripping back out again. I've seen that before too. But we'll pull this up and see how well the uh, die core stuck to the silicone. And I'm going to suspect the die core did not stick very well because I don't know if we've covered this or not. The die core does not stick to silicone very well. And unless you got a piece of, um, unless you got, unless you got solvent sandpaper, maybe a wire brush, you're never getting the last little bit of silicone sealant that was there before. And you can see the die core did not stick to any of that silicone that was there before because nobody took it off. And even me scraping this off, there's still going to be just the tiniest little bit of residue on this yellow section right there. You still have to use a, a solvent and some abrasive to actually get that down. Once you get that, you can definitely use normal die core. But you need to physically get all the self-leveling silicone out of the way if you're ever going to use die core on a Winnebago roof. And more to the point that using silicone is the best... Uh, uh, flange seal compared to this butyl tape right here on a Winnebago roof. Winnebago roofs only because again butyl requires compression to actually keep a seal like an o-ring would be. Winnebago uses silicone on the TV antennas and these TV antennas are meant to be up. That's a big lever that could come loose from the roof very easily and even they knew that and so they used silicone instead of their black butyl These are like the hardest things to take off. Which is why I feel safe using silicone as a flange seal, because I've seen that it does work and it lasts. And when a bago just doesn't do it right here, they do it right at this inside where it's gonna mount when the shaft goes through. You can see that this is all just standard 100% clear silicone that you would pick up from the normal big box store. It's great adhesive and a great sealant. Wow. There it is. There we go. So this skylight lens has been replaced. They use the same hardware that uh, Winnebago used. And they use die core like we've already covered. And if there's one thing we've learned so far is that die core does not stick to where silicone was unless you completely clean it off and use abrasive and solvent. So you can see how easily I pulled that off. I have this other one's coated pretty well, but if I were to just lift on it effortlessly, you can see that it comes off just as easily again. So that's why you don't want to use die core on a Winnebago roof. It won't stick to anywhere where the silicone was. So it was all just for show. All right, I pretty much have the roof clear. I just have to take the front cap off and I'll start with the easy one in the shade with the rear cap. All the hardware is off. 
Uh, I do like to take the tension and use some putty knives right there. I know a lot of times I'll just use putty knives the entire length, but sometimes I do try the oscillating tool to see if it helps. And I'm not convinced that's any faster. But what I did notice while I was down here is that we have lots of big cracks right here. Just another good reason why we're doing a roof replacement. That might have been where it came out. I don't really know. All right, so luckily this rear cap is just a physical cap or eyebrow, not a complete full wall. Like you might see even on that fifth wheel right there where it goes top to bottom. So that's nice. But this is still a gel coat molded fiberglass cap. You should be able to see the fiberglass on that side there. So you can go ahead and disconnect the backup camera and the lights. All right, so now the backup camera wasn't working when I got it and that's not on my list of things to do. However, I did get a replacement clearance light from the owner so I can replace that one on that rear cap right there. Really just leaves the front cap to take off. It's a little bit more in depth to do to cut the sealant that he just put down in between the radius and the gutter right there. Remember, the gutter stays there. This is uh, where the radius tucks into. Should be able to see it a little bit better. Right there. No physical hardware holding it in there. Just lift it up and it pulls right out of that track as you can see right there. So it's really that seal that I uh, just cut that holds the entire roof together. And that's why I always tell people on a Winnebago roof, this is the most important inspection to do. Because often, especially on these uh, white roofs and white non-painted uh, sidewalls, they used a white urethane manis bond is what they call it. And that stuff turns into like a, a powder and just disintegrates and doesn't exist anymore. So every year you need to be checking this channel more than anything to make sure that your roof radius isn't going to pop out. Because they do put wheat poles underneath right there where wind can get underneath and then balloon the radius too. All right, before I take the front cap off, I do want to remind everybody that on Winnebago roofs, traditionally, Winnebago doesn't add a lap sealant between the front cap and the roof. I think it's an absolute vital thing to do. Somebody added this after the fact. And this is just Dicor, but I think it's important to do that. Absolutely. So we will be adding a lap seal to the front cap too. Always trying something new. This is the uh, windshield gasket, well, windshield urethane tool. Seems like it works pretty good to me. All right, so I got all that loose. I'm just gonna start taking the cap off. I'm almost gonna guarantee we're gonna find that there was a water leak either on that side or this side. So it'll be a telltale sign of dirt underneath there. So it's a good thing we're doing this anyways. Let me get that out. All right, well, we got the front cap off. What do we think? Looks like there was a leak right there. There's dirt coming in. If only Winnebago would have lap sealed it. And let's see about this side. Nope, this side was fine. So it was only one leak, even though I guess technically there was obviously water coming in right here too, because there's dirt on that. But it doesn't look too bad. And this is what the underside of the cap looks like right here. This is what's getting screwed into on the top. There's a piece of aluminum tubing that's incorporated into the fiberglass at the top and then at the front right here. That's why you don't want to do longer screws because it'll go through to the front. 
Well, I got the whole roof cleared off now. The next step is to just rip off the old file on. I think for the most part it will come off pretty easily because of the adhesive failure. I'm not seeing any real damage. That's it. This is the roof on a Winnebago. There's the uh, file on. It is technically fiberglass. You can see the fibers in there. It is a uh, pre-made sheet material. It's not gel coat. So they don't mold this up. It just comes out and roll. So my next step is just to rip all this off and then get down to the deck. Yeah. All right, so I got all the old file on off and let's take a look at the deck because it's probably a good idea that we're doing a new roof on this. Now while at the front right here, we knew that there was a little bit of a water leak and there was indeed a water leak. It was still actually a little wet. It's dried out in the sun quite a bit. If you look, there's little areas like this and right here and right there all the way down. There was no leak. It was not even from the AC, even though there was a little bit of staining from a loose AC. But that didn't come from, this didn't come from the AC. This is where the whole roof was pretty loose. And I think we just have uh, the telltale signs of that condensation underneath there that I was talking about. Where uh, it'll condense underneath the material and then drip onto the roof itself. Uh, and then right back here, I think that probably came from the ladder. They just used uh, rivets on this. So I'll have to put a piece of uh, aluminum or metal in there to mount the ladder too securely. But that's it. Old roof is off. It's time to build a new one. So this should be a fun unit. Uh, the owners are really nice people. I like working with them. Uh, I need to... And so we'll try to get through this one pretty fast. I will try to update and I'll try to let... And then, and of course, we're going to go ahead and uh, cruise up here. Hopefully. You got good skills down there, Chad. <laughs> I failed the grenade test. <laughs> I did, of course. I thought it was like a soda or something. Uh, I nearly ruined my phone for a, a wiffle ball. Oh, it's a pickleball. <laughs> Should I throw it back over? Give it to someone you like. Give okay. It to the best player up there. The best player. There's nobody here to play anymore. We'll put it right there. <laughs> 